Hello, uh, welcome to this lesson about ARIA from your Grade 2 French horn list. Um, I'll get started and I'm going to play the first four bars for you. Now the dynamic is one of the things I want you to listen to. It says piano, but it is a solo. So piano doesn't necessarily mean too soft. Uh, play at what you feel is comfortable um, and then you can get slightly louder later on in the piece. So here's the first few bars. One, two. And you've got two lovely beats there to get rid of any excess air and really suck in some extra air for the next phrase. So that brings us on to the, the phrasing. If we look at the first four bars that I've just played, you can see a comma after the first two bars. Now you could take a breath there. You just pinch a little bit off that C minim in the second bar. Or you could take a nice big breath and play it all the first four bars all together in one go, which is what I'm going to attempt now. And it just makes it easier and it flows better. And then because you've got those two beats, rest in bar four, nice big breath, and you can carry on with the next two bars, and you get another breath after, after seven beats, so it's not long at all. So let's try the bar five and bar six. Okay, so nice and easy, and there's another breath there. You can take a breath in, the, in bar six. Can you hear the chromatics? A, B flat, B, C. Nice and easy. So you've got chromatics in bar five and you've also got chromatics in bar um, seven and eight. All right, and they follow each other. So it's nice and easy and you can control the hairpins and uh, follow the dynamic because you know it's a nice easy scale, bit of a scale, bit of an arpeggio. So let's try from bars 5 to 8 and listen to the chromatics this time and the dynamic changes. And then you've got another two beats to take another nice big breath. It's very, very easy so far. Okay, so tonguing and slurring. There's quite a few differences in the second half of this piece. Um, tongue, slur, tongue, tongue. You've got to look at the pattern and you can practice it two or three times just for that. Let's have a look at bar nine. So I played bar nine three times there. The first two notes were slurred, all the other notes were tongued. Okay, in the next bar, bar 10, tongue, slur, tongue, slur. You can mess about with that and get your lips nice and relaxed and then you don't have to worry too much. As long as you're going to pitch the right note, you should be able to tongue and slur. Just practice it for that. Don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about the dynamic. Don't worry about the pitching too much. Just try to get the tongues and slurs right and then keep adding all the other things to it. So here's bar nine and 10. And then we're getting ready for the end of the piece. Um, now, bar 13, third bar of the third line, is exactly the same as what you've just played in bars nine and 10. Tongue, slur, tongue, 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 slur, tongue, slur. So you've already practiced that. The main difference is the dynamic is louder. So what I'm going to do is go from the halfway point, bar nine, and see if you can hear it. I'm going to play, it'll be the same phrase twice, more or less the same as each other. The main difference is the dynamic. Now in 
the very last bar, you can see that there's three staccato crotchets. And don't make them too short, just make sure they're separated. So this is wrong. You might as well write quavers if you, if you want that. Just a little bit of daylight between each note. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. Go away and practice it lots.